Hello once again, Chiefs Kingdom, and welcome back to RGR Football and this week's episode of Chiefs Concerns. I'm your host, Danilo DiGiulio. Across social media, you can find me as Thunderdane88 on all the social media platforms. Check out my episode of Chiefs Kingdom on YouTube this week on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. If you haven't been here before, go ahead and click that subscribe button and tab that little notification bell, and you'll get all of our future content. We've got plenty of stuff coming up for you, pre-draft, after the draft, free agency, training camp, the whole deal. There's a lot of stuff going on, and we want to be the first to bring it to you. With that said, we're going to flip on over to the offensive side of the ball and one of my favorite positions, the wide receiver spot. The guys who catch the balls make the big plays. I know we've got a few guys that are special in-house that do that. Going into this season, uh, Brett Feach has been on record uh, in his most recent interview saying that, his question answer press conference rather, saying that, uh, of course, we always have, we have Tyreek Hill and we have Travis Kelsey, and they really liked what McCole Hardman did this year and expect him to step up another level again next season. They really liked the way Byron Pringle's coming along. End statement. So to me, that says something to the effect of, in my opinion, rather, that's just something to the effect of uh, Demarcus Robinson's probably going to go somewhere for more money, and we're not going to be able to throw the kind of money at him that he probably would like, and we can really afford to go on to a younger guy with a higher upside. Because I think we've kind of seen Demarcus' ceiling, and we need to do a little better. Frankly, uh, Sammy Watkins, he did say that Sammy, they're going to see what they can do, but it won't be as easy as last year. I did leave that part out. He did mention that, but it didn't sound as promising as last year. And last year, I didn't think they were going to get it done until they did, to be to be quite honest. It looked like it was an, it was not going to happen. But uh, it sounds even less less optimistic this year. A lot of people are saying they expect it to happen. So I was wrong last year. I could be wrong again. But if he isn't back, I expect the Chiefs to draft one, maybe two wide receivers this draft. And I don't expect him to go for them early because he also said that offensive line linebacker, which I'm really loving, and Zayvon Collins, and cornerback are the positions they're going to focus upon. And they said depth at quarterback is also really nice, but of course we're not looking there, at least not early, he said. So maybe we'll get a quarterback in the sixth or seventh round. Who knows? Or UDFAs. But getting over to wide receiver, there's a couple guys I've got my eye on, and they're both going to be available after the fourth round, it looks like at this point. Uh, one of those guys... And I'll go into them both during this process, not today, but just one guy today. Um, I'm going towards guys that are different than what we have on the roster right now. We're losing a guy in Sammy that's a little taller than McColl and, and Tyreek and a little thicker. Um, the, he's got good speed. He was a 4-4-2 guy, Sammy is. This kid that I'm looking at is Marquez Stevenson out of Houston University, the Houston Cougars. And this kid is the fastest receiver you've never heard of. Check him out on YouTube. Look up Just Bomb Productions. That kid over there has got some great clips. Thank you once again, Mr. Takati. Um, this kid is amazing. This kid runs every pattern in the route tree. He's quick out of his, quick into his route, explodes out of his breaks, and still saves juice for after he's caught the football. You think he's going full speed until you realize he isn't. And by then, it's too late. We're talking the first play on the reel that I watched, it was a little hook. Uh, that he took across to the middle and up the middle of the field for a 75-yard touchdown through the defense. I also saw him uh, do a slant and go for 96 yards and a touchdown in that reel. This kid is going to slide. You're asking why if he's making these explosive plays, and probably he's going to run about a 4-3-8 or better in the combine. Why is he going to slide? Let me tell you, because people are afraid of injuries. What do we have problems with with Sammy? The guy couldn't stay healthy. We love him, but he couldn't stay healthy. Availability is the biggest ability of all first year in college freshman year broken collarbone ruined most of his season second year sophomore year was ruined by a torn acl never even got started that season you're thinking why would i want to draft this kid well let me finish his junior year he came in and how did he do oh i don't know 75 catches 1019 yards and nine touchdowns well everybody can have a good season once in a while the next year remained healthy 52 catches, 907 yards, because they're covering him a little bit more. Still got nine touchdowns. Then I mentioned that he had two kick returns for touchdowns in his first year in college. Did I mention he also had uh, two rushing touchdowns in his first year as a starter in college? Well, his first, his red shirt first year. Um, he also is a great return kid. Kid was 22.4 yards per return his first time out. His second year, Playing, he was 27.4, and his last year in college, it was 37.6. He got better every year. This is a guy that Dave Tobe could make great use of. He returned three kicks for touchdowns 
ended his college career with 27 total touchdowns. Like I said, he's probably going to run in the 4-3-4 to 4-3-8 range. The kid is explosive. You're not grabbing him with one hand by the jersey and taking him down. He's broken many tackles like that. I've seen him slow down and wait for balls, and then you think he's about to get tackled, and he separates and explodes. Much the way Marvin Harrison used to do from Syracuse. I walked out at Syracuse, and Marvin was there. I mentioned that last week. And he's got that elusive speed, that, that deceptive speed, where you think you're going to be able to get him, and you just, you just can't. He's just that explosive. It'd be a really nice addition because he's different in that he's six feet tall and 190 pounds and probably has room to grow another five or six pounds once he gets to the pros. I'm looking for Marcus Stevenson. If he's available in the fourth or fifth round, back-to-back him and Andre Sisco would be a fantastic coup for the Chiefs to build solid depth on their roster with guys that have recovered from injuries, come back strong, and proven that they can play once they've grown into their man bodies, which I think that they're doing right now. Perfect timing for Kansas City to get some really hidden, really good hidden gems. As always, go Chiefs. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.